Today I'm going to teach you about the chain rule, but first we need to do a little algebra review. Composition of functions, so something like f of g of x. So when you have one function inside of another, so there's an inside function and there's an outside function. Let's take a look at an example here. f of x is x cubed and g of x is 2x plus 17. Let's figure out what f of g of x is. What you do is you take the g of x, the 2x plus 17, and plug it in for x in f. So it just becomes 2x plus 17 cubed. In the next example, we'll take a look at e to the x and x squared minus 8x. Now f of g of x, again, what you're going to do is take g of x and plug it in for x into the function f. When you do that, you get e to the x squared minus 8x. So the inside function is really the thing up in the exponent of the e to the x. Now what the chain rule tells you is how to take derivative of a composition of functions. So the derivative of f of g of x is equal to the derivative of f evaluated at g of x times g prime of x. Alright, so that's what it is in symbols. Here's what it actually means. So that first part here, you take the derivative of the outside function but you leave the inside function of alone. That's what f prime of g of x is saying. And then you multiply that by the derivative of just the inside piece alone. So let's take a look at an example. Let's look at the function 2x plus 17 cubed. So if you remember, the inside function here was 2x plus 17. We did this one on the last slide and the outside function was the cubed portion. So the way you take the derivative of this is you start with the derivative of the outside. So you're going to take the derivative of the cubed part. So you bring the 3 down in front, and then it becomes a 2. That's the derivative of the outside. But you have to leave the inside alone. So I just rewrote 2x plus 17. The next step is to multiply by the derivative of the inside piece. So the derivative of 2x plus 17 is 2, and so we multiply by 2. If you want to simplify this, 3 times 2 is 6. But then you can't bring that 6 inside of the parentheses because that, those parentheses are squared. So be careful of that. The second example of composition of functions that we looked at on the first slide was this one f of x is e to the x squared plus 8x. So I wrote the chain rule up on the top of the screen there for you to remember. Now let's take a look at how to take the derivative of this. We need to figure out what the inside thing is and what the outside thing is. When you have a composition of functions, you're always going to look for this. So, let's see. Derivative of this, what's our rule tell us to do? It tells us to take the derivative of the inside, sorry, the derivative of the outside, but leave the inside alone. So derivative of outside, leave the inside alone. The outside is e to the x. Derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And we leave the inside thing, so the inside thing is the x squared plus 8x. So basically you just rewrite the function. But now we have to multiply by the derivative of that inside piece. The inside here is x squared plus 8x, and the derivative of that is 2x plus 8. And you can rewrite it if you want. It looks nicer with the parentheses in front and the exponent in, in back. All right, let's take a look at another one, one that we haven't seen yet. Square root of 10e e to the x plus 7x to the fourth. Now, the way you're going to take derivative of this is you have to rewrite it first. We don't have any rules for square roots, but what you do is you rewrite it as the inside part to the one-half power. And typically when you see parentheses like this, it's very easy to isolate what the inside piece is and what the outside piece is. So inside I underlined, and outside is the one-half power. So let's take the derivative of this. Bring the one-half down in front, and then subtract one from the exponent. That's the derivative of the outside. But now you have to leave the inside alone. All right, we didn't even touch it, we just rewrote it but now you multiply by the derivative of the inside.
Now it's your turn to figure out all of these derivatives. So the functions are listed here, and I want you to find their derivatives. It should be similar to the previous examples. Try to figure out what the inside and the outside functions are before taking derivative.